Hey guys, welcome to LOCR FX, the show where I talk about the effects that I use on my main web series, The Leftover Culture Review. My name's Chris and I pretty much do everything. If you saw my previous two LOCR FX videos on the zombie revenge effects, um, straight up you'll notice that I'm using a different software this time. I want to try something a little bit different. Um, obviously, not everyone has access to software like Adobe After Effects. Um, I'm fortunate enough to use it every day in my work and it's what I'm more comfortable using but I thought this would be a great excuse to um, practice and learn on Fusion. This is a super simple effect that I used in my latest review, Resident Evil Gaiden, Biohazard Gaiden. And I'm basically just going to do a screen replacement or show you how I did a screen replacement. First thing you'll notice if you're comfortable with After Effects is that instead of layers, Fusion give you, it's called a node view. So um, I can turn on this node here. All the effects and all the video are displayed visually using a node. And I can look at any part of the workflow and um, you know, I can see how does the footage look, my Resident Evil um, footage look at this point here. That's how it looks. When I merge it with my screen, that's how it looks when I merged it with my screen. And, you know, final composition, that's how it looked. And then, does this, oh yeah, the little red light on my Game Boy there. So, um, screen replacement, it is, uh, it's an effect that it is, it, it feels super simple, but I feel like it can bring a lot of, um, atmosphere and attitude to your videos too. And, um, like I said, this is a free software. I'll talk you through how I went about putting it all together. I never really wanted to turn these into tutorials. I always wanted to show you sort of like the concept and how to get started and know what to think about. And then, um, you know, you can go on from there and find tutorials that are more, you know, on your level. Um, but this has been pretty, pretty easy to put together. I haven't done any formal training in Fusion, so if I'm doing something totally wrong, absolutely let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, it looks, it looks pretty good and I'm happy with it. So, um. All right, so with Fusion to get started, I believe you'll want to go to Tools, Input, Output, and open up a loader. Now this is all my um, my footage off the emulator that I use to capture the footage, because as you know, I feel like emulating a game and capturing the footage digitally just gives you such a good picture. Um, I always recommend having the games to play on their original, you know, format on the original hardware because that's going to give you the best gameplay experience using the controllers that were designed for it, etc, etc. But when you're capturing footage, you know, emulation is the best. So I've got a loader and I've used that loader to, you can see here, it's pulling footage from my biohazard guide and um, play through and if I open that up yep it's gameplay footage pure and simple but um, so that's that's how you get started in fusion obviously you can see here the entire workflow and all the effects I've added at what point um, I've also, I've got three loaders here. I've got the gameplay footage here, but I've also got the Game Boy. So that, oh, that's just the screen. I've also got the Game Boy. This is the uh, back, oh, I guess you'd call it a plate in VFX terms. So this is where all the footage will sit on top and sit into. So um, this final Game Boy comes in right at the end and it sits underneath the screen. So, um, let me explain that a bit better. I've got the gameplay footage here, and I've got the screen here. So what I've done, these polygons literally, you know, like, uh, this polygon here, 
maps out the screen. This polygon here maps out the Game Boy screen. So um, polygon for each of my um video inputs um to give it the correct size. And then both these video inputs end up getting merged together, which is where this one comes in. Oh, for whatever reason, that's how it looks. <laughs> like I said, I'm still learning so much from um, working in this software, but as you can see, I've got the gameplay footage is being merged on top of Wait a minute. So this will tell me so the background. So the gameplay footage is behind this Game Boy screen that I've got here. And I've merged them using screen, which is just um in After Effects is called a blending mode. Um it just changes how your two layers um work with each other. I remember being explained once that it's like having like um, two frames of video, you know, like on the old film reels, how you'd have each frame would be its own image and it would let light through. Like this was a way to combine two frames in the olden days using different different methods. Um, not sure how good an explanation that is for you, but there's different ways to combine two frames of video. Um, screen gives you this effect where you know it, it looks like a screen um, I should point out now that this this method of screen replacement really works well for systems that don't have backlighting or front lighting in the case of the Game Boy Advance SP but um like the Game Boy the VMU the um if you can turn the backlighting on, on like the original Game Boy Advance would work great for it um, Neo Geo Pocket, all those systems, you know, this would be a really great way to do the effect. If you've got something like you want to screen replace on a TV, you really have to factor in the light, how the camera that you're using at the time processes the light. Is it going to be a glow? Is it going to be um, streaked across the screen? So there's a lot more factors to take into consideration if you're dealing with a lit screen. But for something as simple as a Game Boy screen replacement, yeah, just a uh, the screen you can see here if I change it then you know I get all these different types of ways to blend the two videos but screen screens perfect so obviously with my gameplay footage I've added a defocus so the defocus sits off the polygon or it should sit on the polygon. The polygon should set where the defocus happens. So if we zoom in here, aha, so you can see that inside the circle is clear and outside it's got the defocus applied um, I don't really like that I'll probably want to do something a bit more like this and you can see it's only a, a slight defocus that's to match it up with the Game Boy like you can see here that it starts to lose focus here but it's at its most focused in here so um, with this, I'll want to try and just match it up approximately to the Game Boy screen. And that'll just help try and sell the effect a bit better. You know, when I get to this stage here, you, you want these the screen pixels to look sharp. And over here where you can't see the pixels can look a bit softer. So little details, but I, I feel like they really help they'll really help sell the the effect and um, you know I, I don't mind if an effect looks fake but it can't be distracting so if, if it's gonna look fake it needs to at least be consistent okay so we've got our gameplay footage we've added a defocus corner position 
um, literally pins it into the corners of the screen. I think I... You had to fudge it a little bit in some places. So it doesn't match up, you know, perfectly, but it looks better like this in the final composition. Because obviously we've got a few things at play here, like these polygons don't match up on the final composition, but if you're just looking at the polygons on the game screen, then you can see that... Yeah, so you need to be aware of what you're currently viewing and how that works in the final composition. Hopefully I'm making sense still, but um, also at any time we can turn off an effect just to see how, what sort of effect our effect is having on our video. So using our pass through there, we can turn off this corner pinning. This is the game, this is the game footage at its original size, which obviously doesn't match. Turn off defocus, see if that's, you know, adding anything to our effect. It's adding a little bit of glow, which, you know what, don't like the glow, so I'll turn that down. This is the bloom level. Perfect. We might bump up the defocus. Great. A bit happier with that. Um, so yeah, like I said, three sets of video. This is just the Game Boy screen merged with the gameplay footage. So the Game Boy screen merged with the gameplay footage gives me the gameplay footage on a screen. That then gets merged again with my original Game Boy footage. So by merging the screen back on top and this should be a normal merge I believe. Yep, normal. So it's quite literally pasting this without any sort of opacity or any sort of blending at all directly on top of the Game Boy. What we could do I mean that's that size obviously but um Oh, what is it? Blend. Yeah, blend sets the opacity. So if your gameplay footage was still coming through a bit bright under the circumstances, you could turn it down a bit here, you know, at the last step. Which, um, you know, Fusion, even though it looks a bit different and it's a bit harder to get your head around, it gives you a really clear idea of what's happening and when it's happening. Like looking at my After Effects um, compositions, they are very messy and obviously there's a lot happening there but the effects get applied to the video itself or to an adjustment layer or you have null objects. Um, I'm not quite sure how to pull off some of the more um, elaborate effects like stuff that I did in the Zombie Revenge episode but um, Fusion is a free software at the moment. It um, used to cost a lot of money but obviously they're trying to get a bigger market share at the moment and by putting out their software for free they can grab that sort of low-end market and as they move up they'll be more likely to bring Fusion with them to to their workplaces. Um, like I said I, I've been using After Effects for a while now so it's definitely where I'm more comfortable but using something like Fusion it is a much better way especially if you're working in a group of people or with a group of editors to to be able to share and look at compositions and um, get an idea instantly of you know what's happening and where it's happening are uh, great for troubleshooting and like I said my very last thing that I added here was it should be a paint layer but I get the feeling the red dot that I painted on doesn't apply through the whole video it only shows up at a particular point um, Oh, painted it back on there. <laughs> Whatever. Obviously, I'm still learning Fusion myself, but um, honestly, if these are the sort of, like, 
one great thing about having the leftover culture review was just the ability to work on effects like this, stuff that really interests me, you know, whenever I want. You know, it is a simple effect, but I feel like as, as a video game reviewer and trying to put together some really nice eye candy for my show. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, you can download Black Magic Fusion free from their website. Uh, it used to be called Ion Fusion, but um, Black Magic have taken it over and hence the price change to, to free. But um, you can download Fusion from their website. Hopefully we'll be able to do something a little bit more complex next time when I get my head just around it all a little bit better. But um, thanks for watching. Uh, take it easy, guys. Cheers.